Howdy. Um, to start, thanks so much for having me. Time is all we can offer each other, so I don't take it for granted that you all are hanging out with me um, for this session on an overview of full site editing. Um, I want to note this presentation is being recorded at the end of August, mostly. Um, so some of this stuff is very fast changing and fast moving, um, but I'm trying to do my best to make this as fun and as up to date and as relevant as possible for you all. Um, you can catch me in the chat where I'll be dropping links and answering questions. Um, but for now, let's dig in. So start, who am I? My name is Anne McCarthy. I first found WordPress at UNC Chapel Hill in 2011 when I was a student. So my roots are actually in higher ed, which is really cool and really neat. Um, feels very meta to be a part of this um, WP campus event because of that. In 2013, I went to my first WordCamp in Raleigh where I got to meet other WordPressers and had a great time um, seeing actually the strength of the community. In 2014, I joined Automatic as a happiness engineer focused on Vault Press and then later Jetpack. And then in 2020, I switched into the developer relations position specifically focused on WordPress.org full-time. So let's get meta and talk about the talk. Um, I always like to know how the pieces are gonna fit together and what's coming up. Um, if you do too, you'll appreciate this section. So to start, um, I plan to zoom all the way out to talk about full site before kind of stepping, um, going step by step to dig in further. So that will begin with a big picture overview of what is full siting, answering some questions. Um, then it'll step further into specific milestones. They'll go through each of them. Um, from there, I'll jump into what actually shipped in 5.8 and then a preliminary look at what's planned for 5.9, which is going to happen, that release will happen in December. Um, then I'll go into a demo of various features that are relevant for you all. I will only be scratching the surface, so know there's a lot more there. Um, then I'll touch on the full sighting outreach program, which is the program that I run that's all about getting feedback from the community about the features. And finally, I'll end addressing some key topics and questions that I've heard um, come up in the community throughout my work um, and in talking with some of you all. So with that, let's jump in to some big picture questions. So why is this work being done? Simply put, it's to empower users. Rather than having specific aspects of your site locked away in a theme or a plugin, full siting will allow people to customize any part of their site how they want to, or quite frankly, let it be. Um, this includes if you're an agency, you can lock down different parts of your of a site for a user that you're delivering um, a website to. Um, all in all though, it's a big and powerful mission to empower people um, to get more out of WordPress. How does this fit into the WordPress roadmap? Pool siting is a major part of phase two of the roadmap. And as a reminder, there are four phases. Um, it's not the only part of phase two though. And there are actually some other interrelated projects that go along with it. And this includes everything from block patterns to the block directory to block themes. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that this is one piece of a larger roadmap, but it is a very much a grounding point for the current um, roadmap and plans for phase two. So what is full siting at a high level? And as a note here, you might hear me say FSE. And if I say FSE, I'm also referring to full siting. I'm just using shorthand. So full siting is a collection of features. And it's really important to talk about the collection of features part. And I'll touch on this in a moment. But it basically brings the familiar experience and extendability of blocks to all parts of your site rather than just the posts and pages. And it's important to underscore the collection of features part. So what does that actually mean? I find that many people refer to full siting as one big thing. So it's one big project when actually it's a very binary on off way to think of full siting. Um, and in truth, while it might be easier to talk about full siting as this big thing, it's actually a collection of many different pieces. And so I encourage you to, to, to adopt that thinking of full siting as a collection of features that allows for adaptability in what we can release um, and also allows an adaptability for what you want to explore. So what does full siting actually allow me to do? So I'm sure you're thinking this sounds great um, and interesting <laughs> at a high level, but what can I actually do with these features? And obviously it depends on who you are and it depends on which part of the feature you're digging into. But to help give a sense of what these efforts are unlocking, here are a few examples with different um, use cases in mind. So if you're a user, um, you can do everything from customizing, customizing your 404 page to editing your header directly to creating a custom template for a specific category of posts. Um, the image here is actually from a call for testing that I did through the full siting outreach program from a fellow designer, um, not fellow designer, but one of my coworkers who's a designer named Channing. 
she built this beautiful um, 404 page and while we all don't have the design chops that Channing does, um, it is really neat to see what's possible with full sighting right now. For theme authors, you'll be able to tap into design tools that will allow you to focus less on the basics and more on actually designing experiences. You can opt in and out of whatever you want as you're ready to explore as well. If you're an agency, you'll be able to have greater control over what you're able to offer clients, including things like setting custom brand colors or typography um, or locking down certain parts of the site once you have it exactly as the, the customer wants. So how is this work being done? So rather than trying to go through everything in one go, this project has actually been broken down into seven different milestones. Um, and some of these milestones are completely separate, their own thing. Some are very interrelated, some mix and match in different ways, um, but we're gonna go through each of them so you can get a sense of how this is being done. I'm gonna try to stay at a high level. So milestone one, <laughs> this is actually such a big milestone that it was broken into two parts. And essentially this is all about laying the foundation. Um, everything from multi-entity saving, which is actually being displayed here in the gift that you see, um, where you can actually update multiple things at once, um, including like a template part, like you update your header, you update a post and you update your footer. It'll show all the changes happening and allow you to check and uncheck different boxes to save. So basically just think about this as building the foundation of the experience, the technical foundation, unlocking things like being able to edit a template directly um, to working on specific blocks for full sighting, like the site title. So we have a site title block and it updates everywhere um, you have it listed. Milestone two, browsing. Again, there's another little visual so you can see what this actually looks like. This is basically giving you a map and a GPS to know your location, how to get where you need to go for your site. So because there are these new parts of uh, your editing your site that are unlocked with full sighting, like template editing, um, and template parts like a header or footer, there needs to be a way to navigate between them. So this milestone is dedicated to that. How can we make it as easy as possible for you to get where you need to go? Milestone three, styling. So this actually covers a couple different layers and I'm gonna break it down in this slide and then the next one um, to help give you a sense visually of what this uh, looks like. But this includes everything from the technical requirements to make various levels work um, and the UI for users. So you can actually see a depiction of the future design for the UI. Um, that users wouldn't interact with um, in the image right here. So there's generally three layers, including styling for local blocks, uh, theme defaults, and then global modifications, or what we often call global styles. Um, you can think of global styles as basically having the option to edit all aspects of your site. So if you want to set a typography that goes across your entire site, if you want to have certain colors for all H1 um, headers, you can set that up with global styles. Currently, much of the work has been focused on the technical underpinnings, especially around aspects like theme JSON, which is a very key component for block themes and a really big uh, tool for block, block theme authors. Um, but for 5.8, the focus is generally going to be on merging the non-user inter interface uh, parts of global styles. So don't expect to interact with this system unless you're a theme author. If you are a theme author, get really excited. Um, and here's a little visual, just so you can get a sense of it. So these are the different layers that have to interact in the styling system and the hierarchy um, that needs to be thought of when working on this milestone. Milestone four are theme blocks. So because full sighting opens up more aspects of the site to edit, new blocks had to be created to allow for this direct customization. Um, for example, included in this work is the site title block, which allows you to directly edit your site title and updates automatically anywhere it's placed. Um, some of the ones that are listed here on the side. And also there are about 20 plus blocks that fall into this category. And some of them were actually released in 5.8, included the, including the site title block that I just mentioned. Um, also included in that is the site logo block and more. I'll touch on this a bit whenever I do a recap of the 5.8 release plans. But for now, just keep in mind that part of the experience is building out these new blocks so that users can directly edit this themselves and customize it. Milestone five, the query loop block. The query loop block has its own milestone, which tells you just how powerful it is. Um, and it's ultimately meant to be a theme author tool rather than an end user tool. You can think of it at a glance as being a more advanced post list block, essentially. Um, it comes built in with different patterns that you can actually select from, as you can see in this GIF, um, which is pretty cool. It makes it easy to set up. Right now, it did ship with 5.8 but it's view only, meaning that you can't actually edit the post title um, when it's placed inside the query loop block. Um, for now though, think of it as a theme author tool with variations of it being something that end users will interact with in the future. 
navigation block. Again, this is just a single block, but don't be fooled. It's definitely a mighty one. Um, so this milestone is dedicated to all things navigation block, both in terms of structure and design. And you can see in this little uh, GIF I have going on, I'm just kind of making little design changes and moving things around so you can get a sense of what it's like to interact with this block. Um, and it actually includes, this milestone actually includes everything from how do you build a really simple menu with a few items to thinking about how to create a really large mega menu um, and add in new blocks like the search block that you can see here, um, or even adding sub menus, different designs, different layouts and more. So the last piece of the milestones is the gradual adoption. And I hope this gift makes you laugh, but also seriously, this is like the intent is like, we slowly want people to be able to adapt in the way that they can. Um, and once more of these pieces are completed, there's basically a ton of room to start exploring how adoption might look like for those who can't or don't want to restructure a full theme. So this might be an intermix of block-based themes and regular PHP templates, um, or it might be covered by projects like the block-based widget editor and the navigation screen. Um, both of those projects I'll cover later, but for now, just keep in mind that this is intentionally a milestone. Um, we want to allow for gradual adoption and want people to have lots of pathways in to taking advantage of full site editing. So let's talk now about what shipped with WordPress 5.8. And before doing so, I want to highlight that the focus of this release was actually on bringing tools to extenders first, rather than changing around a bunch of stuff for end users. And the thought process there is if we can give tools to extenders, they can then figure out what users want from their specific tool set, um, rather than changing the user interfaces to start. Ideally, this is part of the gradual adoption milestone as well to give people time to adapt. Um, and for now, just remember that full sighting won't be active unless someone really seeks out a block theme, specifically work that's built to work with the features of 5.8. So this is a list of just the FSC features. This is not including everything that was in 5.8. It was a very big release. So as mentioned, it introduced new blocks, including site logo, site icon, and more post title block. I could go I could list all 20. Um, it also introduced the query loop block, which we went over during the milestones. Um, it introduced the theme JSON mechanism, which is a big part of what um, underscores global styles and um, building block themes. Uh, it allowed for the template editor for, for pages and uh, blank templates, but this was uh, set as opt-in. So right now you will not get access to it unless you specifically add support for it in your functions.php file, but I am actually super excited about this feature, so stay tuned for it in the future. Um, it also introduced the widgets editor and block widgets in the customizer. I mention this because I see it as being part of the gradual adoption milestone and unlocking blocks in more areas of your site. Finally, it also released design tools, including Duotone, layout controls, padding, and some block supports, which is pretty exciting. So in terms of adoption, to touch on this a little bit more, block themes will actually not work with 5.8 out of the box, um, but the theme JSON mechanism is there to explore. You actually need to install the Gutenberg plugin in order to use the block theme with 5.8. The template editor is opt-in for classic themes and opt-out for block themes. Um, there's also a plugin that I saw, so if end users want to add it, they can actually um, just install the plugin and activate it. The block widgets editor and block widgets and customizer offers um, three ways to opt out. So it's currently the default experience, as I'm sure you've seen by now. Um, design tools are opt in using block supports. So takeaways, just to really hammer this home, only what's ready. Um, will be shipped. And this is true for <clears throat> every WordPress release, <laughs> but um, especially true when it comes to full siting features. And I think 5.8 really proves that. It's not an on off switch as you've seen as well. Um, I've heard people say like, oh, I thought full siting was coming in 5.8. Nope, <laughs> gradual adoption, um, only, only shipping what's ready. And the focus for 5.8 is on giving tools to extenders first. And 5.9 hopefully will interact um, with more end user features. And with that, let's actually jump into what does 5.9 look like? So it's very early stages. Um, on August 13th, Matthias, who is one of the project leads, um, wrote a post about the preliminary road to 5.9. Keep in mind that this actually isn't set in stone. We're very, we're months away. <laughs> so this is very much um, best guess and what will actually ship will change. So very much stay tuned. Um, and if you wanna follow um, up on you know, where this goes, keep an eye out on Make Core for more posts. So at this point, let's take a look at actually a summary of the post that Matthias did. Um, and keep in mind, this is preliminary. So this is our best guess of what's being worked on and what we're, we're working towards. 
Um, to start responsive controls, uh, this is a big thing that I've seen across the community, whether you're an end user or a plugin author or a theme author, folks really want to start seeing responsive controls added into core. Um, included in this are typography controls and more layout controls for container blocks. And this is an important note um, because part of what needs to be done is to have an intelligent system that isn't just focused on the responsiveness of this specific, specific block, but actually the responsiveness of the block within context, um, which I think is really uh, interesting and tough to solve. Patterns, so the block pattern directory launched with 5.8. Um, but now the work is, needs to be done to actually integrate it into the inserter and offer different transformation pathways. So if I add a query loop block and I decide I don't really like this layout, I can actually go through and select different patterns. Interface for theme JSON. So this is basically we need to have a user um, interaction for um, actually setting global styles. Right now there is a way to do that, but it's <laughs> definitely a work in progress. And there is an updated design that has been shared that I'm really excited about getting into the hands of folks to start testing. More design tools, including improving consistency, consistency in the experience. Um, so rather than just shipping different design tools, how do they actually work together? Um, and how can we make them very intuitive to use? And finally, establishing editing flows for block themes. And this is um, included in this is clear information architecture. So right now, things like how do you interact with template parts? Um, how do you interact with editing templates and then switching back to edit a post or page? Um, what about if I wanna edit a template, but I wanna see what it looks like when it's used on a specific page while I'm editing that template and vice versa. So there's a lot to be um, established there um, in terms of the user experience. So let's jump into a demo. And at this point, I'm going to actually kind of contain the experience. Um, I am in the site editor right now. I'll open up this. This is the lovely navigation component that I mentioned earlier as one of the milestones. Um, you can actually navigate back and forth between different things here. Um, this just kind of gives it a taste. So you can see pages, posts, categories, template parts, templates, all that good stuff. If I click here, this will take me back to the WP Evan dashboard. Um, I'll close that out. But for now, what I really want to show you is kind of a merging of different features that have come with 5.8, including um, patterns, template parts, um, and just different basically setup variations that you can actually provide for users. Um, and so what's cool about this is this is done with the Quadrant theme, which is a theme um, made by Automatic. This expiration is done by a themer designer named Kel. Um, I reused his code just as an example of what's possible. So what this is going to show you is actually the process of setting up a new header, um, which has some built in patterns that you can create for users. So let's say I'm running a university network, for example, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. Um, in my experience in higher ed, one of the big things we needed at a certain point was having consistent, consistent headers and footers that matched the university branding, it had the right statements and links. So this would be a way to set this up as you could set up different header variations that folks could actually click through and choose for their department site. So let's actually look through this now. So if I hit new header, I get brought into this placeholder text, um, which shows different patterns and I can then swipe between them. And there are different ones that you can have set up. So you can see they each look a little bit different. These are very simple right now, but it is showing kind of a proof of concept of what you could do. Um, and once I find one that I like, I'll say I like this one, I can hit choose. Then it'll ask me to name it. So let's do this. We'll call this computer science. Create it. And from there, I have a color branded, layout branded. Um, header that I can then customize. So let's, we'll start empty. This is the navigation block, um, which is another milestone that I touched on that's slated for 5.9. Let's say I could add a home link, um, for example, naturally put in. I can also do something cool where I actually can add, let's do like a search. Um, I can make it so that the search is gone. I can customize search our university. Um, I could have the button. Um, inside, no button at all. There's lots of cool customization options also in the block settings here. Um, at this point, I can then build out the rest of the content on the page. So this is, as I mentioned, experimental code. So I'm actually going to jump out of this for now um, and show you the query loop block, which is another cool um, item. So let's create a portfolio page. So I'll call this portfolio. From there, I'll add the query loop block. You'll see this setup 
um, which is pretty neat. So the whole configuration screen, if you go here, there's some neat patterns you can choose from. So in this case, I actually really like um, this pattern in particular. So I'm going to select it like this. From there, I'm going to show off list view, which is a super neat tool that you can use to navigate complex content. And it helps you just see everything on the page. So in this case, you can see there's two columns, column one, column two, and inside each is a query loop block. And it's displaying my content, it's pretty cool. If I go all the way up and select the group block, I can actually make this. So right now this is pretty narrow. Let's say I want it a bit wider. Make it full width, even it out a bit. I can then do things um, to actually edit the blocks within this. So within this query loop block, there's the post featured image. There's the post title block, which is another new block coming. Then there's the post date block. And you can actually add um, basically other new blocks into this as well, which is pretty cool. So if I had post content in these, I could actually add post content, which is pretty nifty. In this case, all these are just basically featured image with pretty simple titles, but you can see how this can get pretty cool and you can customize it to your liking. Um, you can also do things like for this one, I could change the heading level. So if I wanted this to be H3 instead, you actually see it updates all the way down. Um, I actually really like it at H2, so I'll keep it at that. I can center it. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna center this too, just to match it. And it'll match all the way down. Pretty neat. Um, you can even do more complex stuff. So opening back up list view, um, you could actually set um, colors. So let's say you want a different background for this entire section. You could hit custom colors, drag all through here till you find something that you'd like. In this case, try and find something that matches this well. Uh, we'll make it a little bit more red. Yeah, something like that. That looks pretty cool. We'll keep it there. Um, and you can set this as you'd like across the board for all of these things. Another cool thing that I actually really like is um, you can set this to link to the post. So now when people click on your featured image, they'll automatically be taken to the post, which is also pretty neat. From there, if you wanna do more customizations, so you wanna align this center to just have everything centered, you do that as well. So now we're looking like we're in business here. Um, to get even more complex though, let's say you wanted to edit the actual query that you're using. So maybe you wanna have more items shown and we'll increase that to three. Boom, now there's another one. And the third one matches the other two. Let's say I wanna do the same thing here. You can select it all the way up, increase it as well. And it'll also show a third one here. So now I have even more items on the page. So there's also some neat settings where you can actually change what's inherited here and exclude different things, specify specific categories. So in this case, I might just say, I only want parks to show. So now only parks are showing in this column, but then let's say I want in this one, I only want buildings to show. Boom. So in this column now I have the query loop showing me just parks and this one, I have it showing me uh, buildings. At this point, let's chat about the Full Sighting Outreach Program, which as a reminder is the program that I currently run. So I'll go over a few big picture questions just like we did earlier with all Full Sight Editing. So to start, what is it? As the name suggests, it's a program that is focused on full sight editing. Currently, it's just in the form of a Slack channel with curated calls for testing, feedback summary posts, and various educational opportunities like live streams of people building block themes or hallway hangouts where people can come and talk about full sighting and more. What's the goal? The goal is simple, to help improve full sighting experience by gathering feedback from WordPress site builders. And I'll note that while the group originally started solely as a mechanism to get feedback to people building full sighting, there's also a really neat educational component that's in place where people can join to start building their own awareness and understanding of what's to come. Why was it started? It was started originally in May 2020 with about 100 people who signed up to opt into this experimental program and has now grown to over 300 people, which is pretty neat. And it was intended to help create better engagement with users to get feedback to developers more seamlessly. This was a lesson that was learned after WordPress 5.0 was released when Gutenberg was first introduced. 
it became pretty clear from that experience that there needed to be user feedback given to people earlier in the process. So especially for a change as big as full sighting, um, it was decided to try this experimental program um, to bring in more feedback and help bring people along more um, and to do so using a new pathway with this outreach program. So how to join? <laughs> Just dive into the full sighting outreach experiment uh, in Make WordPress Slack. So you have to set up a Make WordPress account and then you just have to find that channel. And from there you're all set and you'll get pings from me. And um, I promise it's not as scary as this dive, which looks really rad, but also pretty terrifying. So now we've covered milestones, the outreach program and more. I'm gonna quickly run through some key topics that have repeatedly come up as I've chatted with folks about full sighting. Will full sighting take over my site? Hopefully you all can say no. <laughs> this is something that has to be opted into mainly through using a block theme that supports these features. In time, I expect more pathways to be built, for, but for now, no, it will not take over your site. What about the block-based navigation and widget editors? So in case you miss, missed it, there are actually two additional projects that are underway to bring the power of blocks to both widgets and navigation. These are meant to help um, classic themes in particular adapt to a more block framework and to act as a stepping stone of sorts for full sighting. These are separate projects from full sighting though, um, but they ultimately help the cause of getting more people adjusted to using blocks in more places. So what about site builders? This is a topic I hear a lot about, so I'm gonna to try to be as concise as possible. So full sighting is first of all being built so that people are not locked into one site builder over another. It's also being built for site builders so they can build on top of what's being created. But ultimately, I've heard people say that they expect full sighting to duplicate the, the functionalities of their favorite site builder, but that's not the case. Full sighting is meant to build the foundation and then there'll always be room for more opinionated takes to open up access more for site editing, uh, shut down access, and just generally speaking, have a more nuanced experience um, geared towards specific use cases. Um, at the same time though, at the core, both site builders and full sighting do share commonality in wanting to empower users and give tools, um, better tools to customize a site. How is this going to impact themes? In the long run, it should make theme development much easier and simple, simpler with design tools ready to tap into, allowing theme authors to focus less on coding and getting the basics in place and more on design expression and aesthetics and actual experiences. Um, I will say I've heard people think that full, that things are going away, and I would actually argue that that's not at all the case um, because full, full sighting requires a block based theme. This makes themes extremely important to get right and actually a really big way um, for pathways to be built, which leads me to my next question. What pathways are going to be created? There are going to be loads of pathways, mainly because this is the entire point of the final uh, milestone of full sighting, uh, the gradual adoption milestone. This will include everything from a classic theme that takes advantage of global styles or template editing or the block based widget screen um, to a theme that works with both the customizer and full sighting. Um, this might mean allowing full sighting specific blocks to be enabled in classic themes. It might mean the ability to edit block templates within a classic theme. There are a ton of options here, though, and ultimately, makes me really excited to see what people both do with the tools that are given in 5.8 and what gaps we end up finding in preparation for 5.9. So what's the best way to prepare? This depends on who you are. And depending on who you are at a high level, this is what I recommend. Join the full sighting outreach program and make Slack. I am obviously very biased since I run that program, but I do think it gives you a great uh, look into what's happening and helps you build your own awareness. If you're a themer or a theme author, check out the theme experiments repo and see what other people are doing to build block based themes. Related to that, you can join the bi monthly block theme meeting where people gather to discuss the latest and greatest with block theming. And then there's also the weekly core editor meetings in make slack, which is great if you're a developer and end user, a themer more. Finally, keep an eye out for upcoming content on learned WordPress. By the time you're watching this, there may already be content in place, but it's definitely an area that I expect to, to see evolve as WordPress. Um, 5.8 is released and as more content is ready to be created um, to help expand people's awareness and understanding of full sighting. What about governance and permission? This was a big topic that um, folks flagged for me that's very important to higher ed and not just to higher ed, but to folks like agencies. Um, it's a big thing that comes up. And currently with the WordPress 5.8 release, permissions were actually mapped for the new theme blocks and template editor features so that only those with the edit posts access could actually interact with those blocks. Um, for example, like the post author block. 
For more global blocks like site title, um, only those with the ability to edit theme options, um, aka admins, are allowed to make changes. And those with lower level permissions are met with basically a read-only experience. Um, thinking more long-term though, this is obviously gonna be something that um, needs to be focused on um, with further blocks like the navigation block and experiences um, need to take this into account. And this is being baked into the very features um, that are being built. And as part of this, there's actually a neat uh, system being explored. There's some early designs that I'll share um, that haven't yet been implemented, but to help get you excited um, around basically a locked status. So you could actually create something and lock it um, so that it can't be edited either by the system or the user. Um, and here's kind of what this looks like right now. So you can see there's an unlock status, there's a locked by a user. So let's say you're an admin and you wanna lock this, you can lock it so that um, you know, other folks who might be editors can not actually interact with this. And then there's a locked by the system. So that's something that you could do if you were um, a system admin or website admin or multi-site admin, you could uh, lock this in place. So these are kind of some of the early explorations that I anticipate to be baked into the entire experience around permissions since um, one of the beautiful things about full siting is that if you wanna edit your header directly, you can. If you also wanna edit it and lock it down, um, that's also part of what's uh, available. So when should we adopt these features? This is a big question I get asked a lot. And it really, of course, depends on who you are, kind of like the earlier question about um, how best to prepare. Um, but the beauty of the, how this work is being done is that you can adopt what you want when you want, uh, thanks to the multiple pathways for adoption, as I previously touched on. Um, many of these features will be very tied to the block theme experience um, as well. But for now, they'll have various opt-in and opt-out strategies, depending upon how it's actually implemented in core. Um, with all that said, I do want to encourage folks to begin thinking about adoption in terms of evaluating which feature um, on its own might be most high impact to get ahead of and to involve. And planning, uh, I've seen some folks planning a few releases ahead. So it's like, okay, cool, is this coming out in 5.8? I'll think about implementing this and pay attention for 6.1. And I think that's a very sound strategy, especially when you're working um, on a small team with a lot of sites to manage. Um, but yeah, begin thinking about each feature. One feature I'll call out, for example, is patterns. I think patterns could be a great thing to start exploring and seeing how you could integrate it into what you all are doing now. So what is being done around accessibility? This is another big topic that um, I've heard brought up a lot. And I'm, I want to touch first at a high level on kind of how I think about accessibility in two different ways when it comes to us in the community who are building this stuff. So there's accessibility and actually using the tools. And then there's accessibility in the output. And before getting into specifics, um, one of the neat things that full siting and a lot of these projects are unlocking is that an enhancement and accessibility gain in one tooling impacts um, every place that that's used. So if a block suddenly has um, like columns block, if all of a sudden becomes easier to use when you're using a keyboard, everywhere the columns block can be used, um, we'll now see enhancements. Um, this is also true in terms of um, offering more options to experience the editing experience as you'd like whether that's using the template editor or the post editor. editor. So for example, um, one of the cool things and preferences that you can unlock is actually having text icons or text instead of icon only um, when you're actually experiencing the editor. So rather than just seeing an icon across the board for some of the design tools, you'll actually, actually see the text label, which makes it easier for some folks to use. And these are options you can turn on and off across all the editing experiences, which again is pretty cool. Um, in terms of accessibility and the output, this is where the power of creating um, patterns and templates and more comes into play as each of those features will make it easier to create um, accessibility approved content. Um, so you could create a pattern that has the right contrast, has the right font size, et cetera, and um, then have folks plug and play as they'd like within that experience itself. Um, tied to this, there's also been a ton of work done on different blocks to make um, them more accessible. So for example, I would love to call it the navigation block, which did not make it into 5.8, but is slated for 5.9, um, to make that block um, keyboard accessible from the start before it could ship. Um, a lot of work was done there. So finally, I just want to close this out and offer some ways to stay connected. I'm at Ann Zazu on WordPress.org Slack, or you can find me at nomad.blog, which is my personal site. There's a contact form there. I encourage you to reach out. Um, I'm not on Twitter, people ask. I am actually not on Twitter. I'm one of those weird millennials. But I do want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope it helped give you a sense of what's to come and inspired you to get involved in shaping the future. We need you, so consider this a formal invite <laughs> to join the outreach program um, and to get involved in these conversations. Thanks so much.